back to another video it's your favorite math professor here dr tarcia hubert in this video we are going to be talking about sampling methods now have you ever watched the popular game show family feud it's host steve harvey who is so funny to me um you know on family feud what they do is they survey 100 people and they ask them these random questions such as name a place that's filled with people who don't want to be there and here go some of the answers they got jail prison hell work meetings cemetery and church i love watching family view because it's funny but have you ever watched it and thought to yourself who in the world are they surveying like when some of these answers be so crazy or an answer that you think should be on the board isn't on the board and you start questioning like who are they surveying so deciding who to survey is exactly what we're going to be talking about in this video is taking a sample they're sampling they're taking a sample of 100 people now how they decide to sample those people is what we're going to be talking about okay so those are called sampling methods the very first method we're going to talk about is stratified sample a stratified sample is obtained by separating the population into non-overlapping groups called strata and then obtaining a simple random sample for from each strata so we talked about simple random sample in a previous video that's basically where each um, you have an equal chance of picking each individual um, that you decide to pick all right so basically with this one they separate the population into groups and there is no overlapping in groups so there's you know um, these are called discrete groups they don't overlap each individual is in a group and then you take a simple random sample from each group basically the individuals in each stratum should be homogenous which means similar in some way so your group should be similar all right they should share characteristics the people in the groups so example a researcher wants to get opinions on a bill that abolishes state taxes so the researcher may divide all registered voters into three categories Republican, Democrat, and Independent. And those are your typical um, political categories. And so those are non-overlapping groups because you usually don't have anybody say, oh, I'm both Republican and Democrat, or I'm both Democrat and Independent. People typically choose one of those groups. So if she divided the, or he divided the groups into three categories, then they will randomly pick people from each category. That's a stratified sample. Some advantages of stratified sample include they allow for fewer individuals to be surveyed while obtaining the same information. And it also guarantees that each stratum is represented in the sample. So this would guarantee that we have a mixture of Republicans, Democrats, and individuals being surveyed versus if you only took a simple random sample, it's not guaranteed that you will have every group represented. The researcher can also determine characteristics within each stratum or within each group based on the results that they get. So they could determine, well, Republicans answered this way, Democrats answered this way, or Independents answered this way. And so that is stratified sample. And here's a little image that I got out of a book, which is referenced in the comment or in the description. Um, basically, you take the population here, you break it into groups that are disjoint. That means there's no overlap and then you randomly pull from each group and that's your sample the next type of sample is systematic sample this is obtained by selecting every cape individual from the population the first individual selected is a random number between one and k so you don't start with the first person you select the random number and then you take every cape individual this does not require a frame. Remember in the previous video, we talked about a frame is where you have to list out every individual in the population. Um, in this case, systematic sample does not require a frame. This is useful when you cannot obtain a list of the individuals in the population. So since it doesn't require a frame, then it's good to use this when you can't determine every individual in the population. So example, a researcher wants to sample every eighth individual. So you will randomly select a number between one and eight, and this is the number that you will start with. So for example, if we randomly select five, all right? So five, the fifth individual will be the first person, and we're taking every eighth individual. So then you will add eight to that, and the 13th individual will be the next one. 
you will add 8 to that. It'll be 21. You will add 8 to that. It will be 29. And so you will keep going. Alrighty. That's how you will take the every 8th individual. But you first have to randomly select the number between 1 and K. So we randomly selected 5. And then you will take every 8th individual. So you will just add 8 each time. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 plus 8 is 21. 21 plus 8 is 29. All right. Some advantages of systematic sampling is that it typically provides more information for a given cost than simple random sampling. And it's easier to employ, which decreases the chances of you having interviewer errors. Here is a graphic that kind of summarizes systematic sampling. So you have your population up here, and then you sample every, for instance, every third person, but you have to randomly select the number. So in this case, they started with two, and then they took every third person, one, two, three. So that'll be the fifth person, add three again. That'll be the eighth person, add three again. That will be the 11th person, and you will keep doing that until you get the sample size that you want. All right, and then there are some steps in systematic sampling if you know the population size. So you will take the population size, and then you will determine what sample size you want, and then you will take the population and divide it by the sample size, and that will give you your K. So that where you take every K individual, that's how you would determine that. Then you will still randomly select the number between 1 and K. We'll call that number P. And then you would um, start with P and you would add K each time. Now, the way you determine the last number that will be selected is you would do N minus 1, where little n is your sample size. So say my sample size is 50. I will do 50 minus 1, which is 49. I will multiply that by my K value. And I will add that to the p-value, which is the number that we start with in our list, okay? So, for example, suppose you have a population of 20,325, and we desire a sample size of n equal 100. We want to first find the value of k, and then we want to randomly select the number between 1 and k to start with. So, in order, let me just go back really quick. So, in order to find the value of k, you have to do the population size divided by the sample size, and then you round down, okay? So let's go back here. So we would do this 20,325 divided by our sample size, 100. So that's our capital N divided by our lowercase n. And this will give us our K. I'm kind of going backwards here. But K is equal to that. When you do 20,000 divided by 20,325 divided by 100, you get 203. 0.25 but you will round it down so actually that's not our k k will be that value rounded down it'll be 203 okay so let's say we randomly select um so k is 203 we got that now let's say we randomly select uh 90 to start off with so we want to recall that P is um, the number that we randomly select to start out with. So if we start with 90, then in order to get the next number, remember our K was 203, we would do 90 plus 203, which is 293. So how did I get that? That's this one right here, which is my P plus K. So 90 plus 203. And then we will add 203 again because remember our K is 203. And that will give us 496. So that will be the next number and we will keep going. So now remember that you can find the last number by using this formula here. So that will be 90 plus our N is 100. So 100 minus 1 times our K which is 203. So 100 minus 1 is 99, so we would do 99 times 203 plus 90. So 99 times 203 gives you 20,097, but when you add 90 to that, you get 20,187. 
So that would be your last number in the list. So we used this formula right here to find the last number in the list. All right, and the next type of sample is a cluster sample. This is obtained by selecting all individuals with a randomly selected collection or group of individuals. So if, for example, a school administrator wants to learn characteristics of students enrolled in online classes, the administer can, administrator can treat each online class as a cluster and take a simple random sample of these clusters. So basically, the administrator will take a random sample of the classes and then they will interview all the students in each of those classes that they select. So here's an example. You take your population, you break your population into groups, and then you randomly select the group. So we randomly select this group and this group. So you will interview every member in each of those groups. This is kind of similar to Stratify, but it's different because in Stratify, you take a random sample in each group. And this one, you, you survey every individual in that group. And then we have what's called a convenient sample. It's a sample in which individual individuals are easily obtained and not based on randomness. And then you'd have different categories of convenient sample. And one of the most one of the most popular ones is self-selected voluntary response, also called voluntary response. This is where individuals themselves decide to participate. So for example, a television news show presents a story regarding a certain topic and asks its viewers to tell us what you think using a certain hashtag. In this case, um, the individuals select to participate on their own by going to Twitter or whatever social media they're using and hashtagging. Convenience sampling results are usually unreliable because they're convenient and people aren't selected at random. So we're gonna look at a few example, examples where we're gonna identify the sampling method being used. Example two, to estimate the percentage of defects in a certain manufacturing batch, a quality control manager at Intel selects every eighth chip that comes off the assembly line, starting with the third chip until he obtains a sample of 100 chips. Which sampling method is being used here? If you said systematic, you are correct because he is sampling or she is sampling every eighth chip. Next example, to determine customer opinion of its boarding policy, Southwest Airlines randomly selects 50 flights during a certain week and surveys all passengers on the flight. Which sampling method is used here? So Southwest Airlines random or selects 50 flights during a certain week. So they randomly select 50 flights during a certain week and then they survey all of the passengers on each of those flights. Since they're surveying all passengers on each flight, this is cluster sampling. Next example, a radio station asks its listeners to call in their opinion regarding the use of U.S. forces in peacekeeping missions. So since people have to call, they're self-selecting to participate. This is a convenient sample, in particular self-selected. Next example, a college official divides the student population into five sections, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and graduate students. The official takes a simple random sample from each class and asks the members' opinions regarding student services. So in this example, the population is broken into groups, but instead of interviewing all of the individuals from certain selected groups, they're taking a simple random sample from each group. And so in this case, this is stratified sampling. All right, and last example, 24 Hour Fitness wants to administer a satisfaction survey to its current members. Using its membership roster, the club randomly selects 40 members and asks them about their level of satisfaction with the club. Which sampling method is used here? This is simple random sample because they're just randomly selected members to survey, all righty? And so these are some various sampling methods that can be used to decide who to survey or who to study. If you have any questions at all about any of these methods, do not hesitate to put your questions in the comments or to send me an email and I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.